And welcome back to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience podcast right now. We have a very special guest in the studio. I mean, not in the studio. I'm so used to saying that. We, we, are, in the, we are in our studio. <laughs> yeah, we got them in studio. their studio. We're all in our own separate studios now, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, um, bed and everything, dude. We got shit. Source here, man. Um, how are you guys doing? It's been a while. Oh, we're good, man. How I think are, it was almost a year ago now since you joined the show, right? Was that a year? No, that was in August. It was almost a year. Oh, so yeah, okay. It feels like so long ago. And we, uh, we also got my co-host, Jesse, here. What's up, dude? Hi, Jesse. It's nice How's to it meet going, you pals? Guys. How's it going? Nice to meet you guys. So happy yeah, you guys are here. we didn't have a co-host. Yeah, now he's here <laughs> holding it down. How's it going, guys? Cool. So, so everyone gets used to your voices just like last time. If you want to go around, each member, say what you do in the band and your name. Cool. We're going to make Jake start because he is new. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Jake's gonna go first. I'm Jake DeMarco. I'm the new guy, and I play bass. Thanks, man. Thanks for joining. I I wish I uh, we could have talked sooner, like last time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll get out there, bro. It's gonna be good. <laughs> sure. um, yeah, I'm Justin Rark, and I play the drums. My name's Ben. I play guitar, and I sing, and I started this monster, whatever it is. <laughs> there we go. It's monster, the source. <laughs> this beast, this, it never dies. It just keeps monster on going. Yeah, you guys got a pretty good setup going on back there right now. I'm just seeing right now. Is that keyboard or? Yeah, so that what you're seeing there is a Moog Little Fatty. Oh, it shit. was one of the first 500 of the Little Fatty, and that was the last synthesizer that Bob Moog designed himself before he died. That was my graduation present from high school, actually. Uh, I had started playing piano a couple years before that, and I, yeah, you know, I to this day I still consider myself a piano player more than anything, even though I play guitar a lot more than I play piano. But yeah, the that synthesizer I saw it when it was set to come out, and I was like, I gotta have this, and my parents got it for me for my graduation present. And it's so it's one of the first 500, so it's got wood sides and it's got a different color combination on the lights too. Um, that thing's super special. The one below it though is even more special that's a 80s profit 600 and that thing is like they're both true analog synthesizers but i think 80s analog gear is kind of the best out there because it's sort of the 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 peak of evolution of analog technology before digital really took everything over so that thing i mean you're gonna hear both of those on the new record a bunch and the little nice. fatty was on previous records and also there's one over here that was on previous records too we use a lot of synthesizers because we're a three piece. And so we want to make all that atmospheric background stuff like really present because it's got so much more space to, to be noticeable in a three piece. Oh, yeah. So this is all like a whole new setup then, right? This whole new studio. Yeah. We moved up here in October and Justin, this, a lot of this gear is Justin's like this rack here. A lot of it's Justin's. We went in on this 500 series stuff together but most of it is Justin's and he has been engineering for a long time. When we met Justin, when he joined up before totality, he's like, what would you guys think about doing it all ourselves? We're like, ah, oh, we've been really sad on doing this record with this label and getting a real producer and kind of taking all this advice that everybody gave us. Oh, what if you wrote shorter songs? Oh, what if you worked with the top notch producer? Oh, if you do, you know, do this, do that. What if you really spent a bunch of money on radio and tried to get a radio single? And so we, we just wanted to do that. I really wanted to know like what happens when you do that? What can we learn from that? And so, so, you know, just, Justin was onto something back then, uh, but we went and recorded totality and it turned out great. It's not exactly uh, what, what we want stylistically, just tonally. Like we had a hard time getting on the same page uh, with the person who produced it, who's been just incredible to us. He's helped us make so many connections. It's just, um, we kind of want to have artistic direction over, you know, this effect and that effect. And it's, it's a whole lot easier when we're just sitting here pressing the buttons ourselves, as opposed to going back and forth via email or something like that. So, yeah, of course. Um, so we, you know, we learned so much from working with Ulrich, but then we, you know, we, me and Justin combined forces basically. And it's weird how we're kind of like two pieces of a puzzle. He's got all this recording gear. He's got drums. He's got this style of guitars and that, right? And then my my stuff's all the other side. I got all the keyboards. I got all these other guitars. I got all the amps. I got, you know, the whole thing, right? So when we put these things together, we're sitting around looking at the studio like, oh, man. This is insane. So <laughs> what, have, his, what have we done? 
<laughs> right. Seriously. Like, wow. And, and so he just put his whole gear list together for the studio because he's been working on his website, getting ready to take a lot more clients. And you scroll, you just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. It's like, wait, you have this, you have that. I mean, look at this thing, this Roland Space Echo. That's like one of the most sought after pieces of gear out there. It's real, Jeez. real tape echo. Like you can watch the tape circulating around as it's making the <laughs> oh echo God. itself. You know? so I'm intimidated basically- just looking at it, honestly. <laughs> yeah, right? There's too many knobs. You guys basically got like the Infinity Gauntlet, like that was this Infinity Gauntlet right there. Boarding. Everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the new studio uh, is where we're going to record our new record. We just did this single that's not even really a single. It's pre-production that we just put a little bit more effort into, honestly. It's kind of started out, we working on this song. Um, it sounded pretty good. And we're like, okay, well, what if we kind of put a little bit more effort into this and just tried some of these recording techniques that we're thinking about using and seeing how it worked out. And it worked out incredible. And the other piece was we wanted to make a good demo that we could go get mastered and see who we really wanted to use for mastering. Because, you know, mastering is one of those things that can really ruin a good mix if you use the wrong person. And it's also one of those things, if you use the right person and your mix isn't exactly right, a good mastering engineer can come in and just make those little micro adjustments um they're just they they're kind of wizards in a lot of ways uh so we just we discovered that we're gonna we like uh ackle from tesseract the most we tried uh, another studio too but uh it it was really great but the price wasn't right and so we wanted to find something a little bit more cost effective and tried out ackle from tesseract and he just made it sound so good so we know who we're going to use for mastering and because of all this that's going to be included in our crowdfunding pre-sale that's coming out on Friday, the 19th of June. And we're going to basically just do like a whole crowdfunding uh, campaign where we're uh, giving out limited edition merch and we're giving out this track, which it's basically a single, you know, it sounds better than anything sources ever recorded. And we did it right here. And wow. um, <clears throat> so that's going to be, even if you just get a sticker for a dollar, you'll get the MP3 download of the track. And the other thing that's really cool is, even if you just get a, if you just donate a dollar and get a sticker, you'll also get a pass to what we're calling the Wellspring, which is our fan club essentially, and it's a it's a login based section of our website where we're going to be doing a bunch of exclusive content, filming while we're in the studio, tracking, doing live streams uh, while we're in the studio, doing different things. Uh, so and and we'll be posting artwork as we get it before people uh, everybody else can see it. We'll be posting you know the album for people to listen to before anybody else can hear it, that kind of thing. So it's going to be super cool. Uh, and that all starts on Friday. So you can just pre-order the album, get some limited edition merch and uh, be a part of the recording process. So you just have to donate or pre-order to get into the uh, school society website. Yes, exactly. Uh, yes. And so we're solid. going to have a bunch of different levels of <clears throat> there. Like there it's kind of, it's like donations, but you're buying, you're just buying stuff, you're just pre-ordering stuff basically. So if, for a dollar, you're going to get a little sticker pack. Uh, for five bucks, you'll get a keychain. Uh, Ten bucks gets you this, right? That um, we're doing also something really, really cool uh, with the limited edition packaging for the album itself, because nobody listens to CDs anymore. Really, we want to make <clears throat> physical production something that's still a part of music. You know, mm-hmm. I think that so much of where everything's going is really cool, but the thing that gets lost in all this digitization of everything that's so accessible is you don't have the thing in your hands, you know? Oh yeah. And so we're going to make, whether it's a vinyl or a CD, it's going to be vinyl sized and you choose if you want vinyl or a CD, but it's going to come in the same size packaging because one of those things that people talk about forever that has been lost in modern, you know, modern technology and music is the, is the artwork being big. You know? Oh yeah. And so Travis Smith, who does our artwork, is one of the greatest album artists of all time, in my opinion. And we've got to give him something to to put his stuff on, right? So the other so last album we animated all of Travis's artwork and we put it in the totality video. If either of you have seen the totality video, you got the the skeleton like wobbling and stuff. It's cool. (laughs) So I found somebody new to work with through one of the tool pages that we're on and he does all this animation stuff even better. He's like really cool. And uh, his name's Misha George, hit him up on Facebook if you need animation. 
And he also uh, does this stuff with an augmented reality app. And so he uploads his animation to the augmented reality app, which is free, which you can download on your phone. And you open it up, it pulls up your camera. And if it recognizes something that has augmented reality information uploaded to it, it goes into that. So if you point it at the image, it's going to start moving and doing the animation that he's put in. It's also going to play a minute long piece of music. So we're hiding All remix right. tracks <laughs> in the artwork that you have to look at through augmented reality and listen to through augmented reality. And that's, that's only going to be available nuts. in the crowdfunding pre-sale that starts next week. That is Jesus. nuts. So you guys Skynet has started. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all started. Yeah. The world's gone. <laughs> yeah, that's you guys really uh, planned this out really well. That's a lot of Jeez. shit going on. I was literally going to ask, like, because you guys do your own thing. It's like usually when bands do their own thing, there is a problem where you don't have someone, like, nagging you to get going. I was like, it sounds like you guys don't need that at freaking all. You guys are cha going into the future with your technology and recording everything and setting everything up. It's like, Jesus Christ, guys. Yeah, yeah. right now we're just too excited to get everything out. Like, we're, we've been spending a lot of time working on this album. You know, we're all kind of locked down in our studio. Um, so oh, yeah. We're ready to, you know, record it and then release it. So we're really excited. Out. Do you guys have, like, a timetable when the album might come out? I'm hoping October. Uh, okay. Because we're not really under any deadlines and because the music industry has come to a screeching halt, ultimately, um, we just want to spend the time and do it right. Jake just joined up in the spring. So And Jake? we didn't work on any new stuff when he joined up because we had this whole tour and we are going to go play South by Southwest and do all this stuff and it all got canceled and so then once the quarantine happened like we just you know jake lives with his family and we didn't want to expose anybody to unnecessary risk so we weren't practicing as a full band but we're working together we're facetiming each other and going over parts to new songs and i ended up i hate tabbing shit now i actually like tabbing shit <laughs> because it's like this really i hadn't i had never tabbed out a whole song all the way through what do you when use? you get it done, it's the most rewarding feeling ever. You look at this seven-page piece of monstrosity. What it? I made this. We made this. It's insane. Do you use like so, Guitar Pro or something like that? Yeah, I got. I ended up buying Guitar Pro just because. And so then, you know, because of this, I'm gonna end up tabbing out all the new record and probably the old records too. And we'll start putting out tab books for people. It's a way to be. I'm surprised more people don't try and learn source songs, but I realize it's because they don't understand the rhythms. I like. Yeah. This is, this is, my guitar parts to me are really easy and like basic, you know? But then people start trying to play them and they don't get the rhythm. And I'm like, man, it's a, I, I just, I didn't understand that people needed tab to help them out on that. So, I need tabs uh, for everything. <laughs> well, it also doesn't help out too. You guys are very atmospheric too. So some of the rhythm gets clouded almost like where things are played. So like, I could definitely see that almost like tool songs actually, like where sometimes like it, there is like staccato, <laughs> you hear it and you're like, oh yeah, that's what fuck it is. It's just hard to play. And then other times it sounds easy, but it's like clouded with other stuff. You're like, what is that? I can't tell. <laughs> you listen on YouTube at 50%. You're like, what is this? <laughs> I can't tell. Usually with, um, actually we were talking to Sifting and uh, they were talking about how they put all their stuff into Guitar Pro as well. And they actually speed stuff up or slow it down just to see if they can actually play at that speed. And sometimes yeah, yeah. they think it sounds better. And they're like, let's do something we can't do. Uh, and they put it all in through Guitar Pro. And then they're like, you know what? We like it like that. We're going to practice and, you know, get our chops up so we can actually play it like that on the oh, record. Yeah. yeah, and it's funny because even without Guitar Pro, that's how I've always written because I'm not a guitar player by nature. I learned piano first and got pretty decent at it. If you heard me play, you'd be like, wow, this guy's an insane piano player. For a pianist, they'd be like, yeah, he's, he's okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but the piano is one of those instruments that's so deep. He, because it he has plays like, piano, I guess. Notes, you okay. know, like it's, it's a deep game, piano. But uh, most of guitar for me was trying to figure out how to do what I knew how to do on piano, but make it sound like a guitar. The beginnings of Source, I was with, you know, this clavinet playing through a guitar amp trying to sound like a guitar on piano because I was so convinced that I couldn't play guitar. And so once I decided to start playing guitar, then I just put so much focus into just really trying to figure out how to play guitar the way I knew how to play piano. So I'd always hear these things in my head and understand musically how it would work, but then have 
no idea how to play it on guitar, but I knew I had to do it because I heard it in my head. I'm like, dude, you got to do this. You got to make it happen. And like Benjamin's one of those things that that song, that was after I'd been playing guitar for a while. And if you look at that riff, it's not necessarily the most complicated thing. But when when Jake tried to learn it, when people first try and learn it, it's it it for it takes a second. It's a little bit weird. And I heard that in my head while I was walking on the beach in Florida on vacation. And I didn't even have a guitar. Uh -huh. I had an acoustic guitar, but it was in standard. And I was like, I know this has got to be in drop C. I can hear it in my head. It's got to be in drop C, right? And so I just, in my head, I visualized, I'm like, it's got to be like this, right? It's got to be. And then I got home and played my guitar and just for like an hour, just took all the time to really make my fingers make it happen, you know? And and it was so hard, but then once I got it, now it's now it's second nature to me. And it's it's not one of those things that people do unless they have a greater understanding of music than the instrument they're writing on, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, no, I completely understand. Like I can't do that at all. I'm like, I hear it and I hold the guitar, I'm like, nah, I'm gonna get someone else better to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, hey, da 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 da. Come on, bro, play it. Come on. That's how I that's how I am with drums. You should have just now. I was like, Justin, you missed the da 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 da. Dude, it kills me, especially when drummers do it, because I'm a drummer, and when people did that to me, like my brother, he's a bassist, and he'd be like, dude, just do like like Dave Grawl circa like 1998 or something. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like, come on. <laughs> like, come on, dog. Just play the play the riff. Play the riff. I'll give you a part. So uh, how did uh, Jake, like, how did you uh, get to know these guys? How did you guys, uh, how did you join? Um, so Riley was like our mutual friend and, um, he was their bassist. Um, and, and he kind of told me that he wasn't in the band anymore. And he's like, you should go try it out. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And I got like, the, I got in touch with them and they gave me a song to learn. And I kind of like, I learned it and then I, I got here and we like played it and it was like, oh yeah, that's, that's cool. And then that was kind of <laughs> that. And then, um riley was like hey man you should learn these other songs and then go jam with them again because they're trying to go like do south by southwest and then um i came back and we played through all these songs it was a, i think it was like a more like diverse bunch of songs or whatever so i got to like expand a little bit more and then that's when things kind of clicked and we were like okay yeah let's let's do that oh, nice man i mean awesome. i was watching the uh, you guys did like a live stream video right with like um I think you, you would you play like serpents or something? I forgot what song you played. We we played twelve minutes of Ben cursing out the computer, <laughs> <laughs> and then we played Forgiven, yeah. and then Forgiven, the internet yeah, yeah. cut out entirely. And that was yeah, that was that was a day. But uh, we ended up recording the whole thing. If you wanted to go watch the rest of it, what that show that show <laughs> we ended up making more money than we've ever made off of a show that we didn't sell merch except for maybe one show that i can think of what because people people tipped us like a bunch of money and like somebody tipped us 250 dollars and i started crying <laughs> I was that's like, sometimes what? a whole show <laughs> <laughs> some bands make that in a whole show that's awesome <laughs> i know right so yeah we were really excited that's really cool i mean uh, i know i know a lot of bands have been doing live streams now uh, I think Psycho Stick, I don't know if they're still doing it, but for like every Thursday or something, they kept putting out stuff like every week. And now like I, feel, I see there's like um, Slay at Home Fest that just happened too. Bands just got together, recorded something and posted it for Metal Injection, you know, for like a, I think it was a two day virtual festival. So I think uh, that's actually kind of like the way of the future in a way where like virtual concerts are actually pretty beneficial to the bands. Like you said, you made more money than you usually do. Mm -hmm. And we spent zero dollars. <laughs> and anyone around the world potentially could have watched as long as they logged in. And since we recorded it and posted it to YouTube because our internet did go out, you know, anyone can watch it, you know, at any time now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what happened like Code Orange. I remember watching the live stream when the, the first quarantine hit. They had a concert that like Friday and they decided to go along with it and stream it instead, instead of doing their like album release show. And I remember seeing like 14,000 people and I like seeing the donate, you know, I watch Twitch and stuff here and there. So I know like the, the, the culture and you just seen, you know, donations go through. I'm like, this is what I want bands to do. I'm a huge music fan. I want bands to make that. And sometimes like, you know, obviously people don't know technology. They don't know the culture. So it's hard for everyone to get together in a room like psycho stick or whatever. And, you know, but yeah, it does help. And people want to give you money. 
<laughs> when they're fans of you. Like, I want to give – I'm looking for – ask Chris. I'm looking for reasons to give people I'm a fan of money. I'm just like, fuck it. I'll buy, <laughs> I'll buy a shirt. It's small. I don't fit in it. I'll hang it on the wall. Whatever. Fuck Friday, it. Dude. I'll buy a shirt and it's small. That's <laughs> great, dude. I'm <laughs> like, man, we're a three expert. Yeah, <laughs> right? Like, it's just like it's just not happening. I'm like, I'll, I'll fit into it eventually. I'll lose an arm or something. <laughs> <laughs> I will never fit into a small. Oh, no. I wore a, a, a youth large, and it just looked like I was like a baby Huey. My belly button was just sticking out the front, and my friend's like, "What is that shit?" I'm like, "It's a kill. It's a vintage kill switch shirt, bro. I can't. <laughs> I cannot wear it. <laughs> I got to show the pride." Yeah, that's the only time showing belly button is metal, though. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> right. you just need like a Budweiser or something, and you'll sl- slay it right after it. You're like, you slay, what, whatever. <laughs> Circle pit, <laughs> parking lot. I don't fucking know. Circle pit. You're at Sears. Uh, whatever. <laughs> I think you donated your whole check last week to the band camp, like when they were waving their feet some Friday. I feel like you bought so much stuff. Like you got, got the end fl- vinyl too now. I spent so much money furloughed. <laughs> it's crazy, dude. I don't have a job, and I've been spending a lot of money for some stupid reason. I should be clutching my pennies, just holding yeah. them all to my chest. And I'm just like, I need vinyl. I need all the vinyl. I don't have a vinyl player. I'm like, I need all yeah, the vinyl. Don't, don't clutch your pennies until our crowd hunting's over. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll start saving right point. after right after that. All right, cool. <laughs> how's that law usually? How long does that usually last? Like a month or something? We're just gonna do it for two weeks. We want it to be pretty exclusive, and we want to uh, make that urgency for people. Um, so two weeks is good because you kind of we'll do like a week. This next week we'll start kind of really hammering that this is gonna start. And then Friday, we're going to hit all the paid promotion that we're, we're putting, you know, a couple hundred bucks in the paid promotion just so that everybody, it, it's so hard. Nobody knows when we're doing anything because social media algorithms don't really work. And I think they're kind of set up <laughs> yeah. to make, like, if you're not over the cusp, they're sort of set up to keep you under the cusp, you know? And yeah. if you're over the cusp, then they're like, oh, we want your content. And so uh, two weeks is good because we're going to just really push it and make people feel like hey i need to do this now otherwise i'm not going to get all these cool things that we're doing only in these two weeks so it's really designed for the people like you guys who believe in music and want to support it and know how it works because so many people think like oh you guys are musicians man like is that how you buy your bmw like nah i got it for (laughs) really cheap and i pay a shit ton of money on it every month but i just (laughs) love my car it's not a you know it's a um we're really setting up a lot of different ways for people to support us so that we can put out something really, really cool. And all those higher level support bundles are going to come with some really cool stuff too. Like my awesome recipes for ridiculously tasty food and (laughs) some hand painted stuff. Uh, We've got canvas art prints of all the artwork that Travis is going to do. So those art, those canvas art prints will also do the augmented reality thing too. So oh, if you get the canvas art prints, you get a much bigger piece to look at it. And He's that. signing it, and you guys signing it too. Yeah, if you pay us more money, <laughs> our signatures <laughs> cost money. We have to live. Money. Pay Only us money. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty awesome. That's a. I feel like that's a usual like um more bands got to start doing stuff like that you know like thinking outside the box i feel like usually the the promotions you see are like here's a t-shirt with the the cd or a sweatshirt you know what i mean yeah well, that's protest, the thing. protest oh. the hero just did a new thing and justin's been just sitting there gawking over it like <laughs> tell them some of the cool stuff that they're doing um yeah they have like hot sauce and dice um well i got like uh what uh, we call it What's the Dungeons and Dragons dice? Kind of D&D <laughs> dice? No, oh, I know, I know, like... Six-sided, but it's oh, okay. a set of five, and they have, like, their logo on the... the oh, that's the dope. Side. Okay, that's pretty cool. Because uh, I know Black, Mar- yeah. Black Dollar Murder did that. I was like, oh, shit. They, like, they sold a whole campaign for Dungeons and Dragons. It's that's like, cool. <laughs> what? They know, they're, they know they're listeners, man. They know they're fans. <laughs> nerdy death metal kids just fucking ripping. I mean, that's, a, that's the bit you had before. Like, all metalheads are nerds. <laughs> In reality. Some sort of way. And it, like, if you're the burliest tattoo on your neck with like death or something on your neck, you're hard as shit. You still like collect your t-shirts. You're like, dude, I got this at this tour. I got this at that tour. doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, that's how I am. probably pay a dominatrix on a regular basis. Yeah. But- <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's crazy about art? Because like speaking about it, it's like people like, for some reason, everyone likes some form of art. Where it, you know, movies, music, 
actual art like on the goddamn wall a picture <laughs> recipes but it's like people disrespect it so much it's so weird like it's like dude your music helped me in my hardest time hey, you want to buy a cd are you a fucking idiot do i have time <laughs> to buy a cd i have to buy <laughs> it's just like yeah. and they just leave it's like what i'm not giving you ten dollars yeah comedians they're like just go up there and make me laugh and they're not funny it's like i want to fight you it's like why because you're doing something i can do you're just talking it's like all right it's like weird but But we all love it but that's the thing is that i think ultimately they realize that there's some part of them that won't let them do that and then they become jealous oh yeah that's take out that jealousy on the people who aren't as inhibited as they are it's crazy like it's a perfect example i was on that hell yeah tour that we did we were in San Francisco and at the end of the shows, because we played really early and because there's so many people and everyone's kind of a die hard hell yeah fan or in flames fan in flames fans are generally more open-minded about finding new music than hell yeah fans. They just really want to listen to Vinnie Paul play drums forever. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, so I would go stand at the exit with CDs and just take cash with CDs because so many people wouldn't go look at the merch store. And that was, we paid money to get on that tour. So the only way we get any of the money that we invested back is if people play, buy merch. You know? So I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know, like, hey, CDs, check out Source. We got a CD, blah, blah. And this one guy's like, hey, man, you guys were really good. And I was like, hey, thanks. You want to buy a CD? He's like, nah, I'll just download it when I get home. <laughs> and I was like, cool, <laughs> man. I know jujitsu and I'm going to choke you. Like, you know. uh, <laughs> five Hopefully minutes he just meant he wanted that, digital. <laughs> five minutes after that, this woman walks up to me and she goes like, you guys were really good. I'm going to buy your CD. How much? And I was like, 10 bucks. And she was like, here's 50. Keep the change. I was oh, there like, you go. wow. Made up Damn. fivefold. <laughs> like, That's nice. Totally stopped me from jumping on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, dude, people do. Well, that's why I always like, I used to, back, you know, when I was in high school, that's when like pirating really, like actually middle school really is when pirating took off, like really changed why, the music. Why you're... It's great, yeah, right. And you didn't even know what you bought. Like, oh, a Metal Ocalypse episode. Oh, it's just porn. What the hell? Like, I'm, I'm 12. Why do I want to see some weird guy? Whatever. But I remember I talked to oh, some you guy. Didn't want to see that? I don't know. No, I was just like, oh, Metal Ocalypse. Just some like sad looking people doing stuff they didn't look like they wanted to do. Yeah. yeah. In my living room with my parents. I was like, oh shit! Look, <laughs> I'm turn it off. But uh, I remember like this kid who's like, dude, did you, uh, pirating helps bands more than it hurts them. I'm like, how? It's like, well, some bands get heard. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But what about the money that just disappeared yeah, out of yeah. nowhere? It's like all that hard work, you know, you pay. It's like music's free, right? It's like you're a music fan, you idiot. Like, how does that happen? Like, yeah, I downloaded music when I was poor. I didn't have any money. Now I have a full-time job. I buy my music. <laughs> I buy it all. That's what I try to do. Yeah, and if somebody likes my band and they're, like, really strapped for cash and they download my music, I don't care. Ultimately, I just want you guys to listen to my music. Also, don't tell the band too. Don't when they're trying to sell you. <laughs> if everybody's doing that, we can't keep going. You know, that's it's so you have to really check in with yourself. Like, can I really not afford this, or am I having a budgeting issue? <laughs> and yeah. my priorities aren't straight. And my twenty-four case of Coors Light is more important <laughs> than enriching myself with good. And that's the question you have to ask yourself. Yeah, and people just don't care. Like, I, you know, it's just weird, but, man, that's why I buy extra, even though I probably shouldn't. Well, even people though, like you make whatever. the music world continue to go around, my friend. Well, yeah, I try to. Yeah, I got to make it up for all the business. ignorant guys that tell all the bands that they're stealing their music right to their face. It's weird. <laughs> it's, hey, I'm yeah. stealing your product. Thanks. All right, have a good day. Whatever. <laughs> like, weird. Remember Randy from Lamb of God said that. He's like, dude, back in my day, we had to steal from the record stores. Now you just go home and you just like take your take your pants off. You sit in your underwear in a tank top and you just rob people blind <laughs> <laughs> with well, no danger. And, and that that whole day is as long past because of streaming services. Oh yeah. And now these assholes came in and they were like, "Hey, let's make it really affordable for people to listen to everything they want to listen to, and then not pay any of the people who made it." And we'll take all that money ourselves. <laughs> and the people listening to it feel some type of like good feeling because they're like, oh, I'm paying for this. And my money is going to support the arts. <laughs> no, your money is going to a couple assholes who are ripping all of us off. 
It's like, it's like the South Park episode. We're sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're sorry. And, yeah, and it's gone. <laughs> what was it? It was like 500,000 streams just to make like minimum wage for the year or something like that? Yeah, I saw something. It would take millions of streams to make the salary that uh, average Spotify employee makes in a year. Oh, yeah. like awesome. hundreds of millions of streams not just millions hundreds of millions it's ridiculous yeah that's uh why we buy well that's why i buy vinyl like you said you get extra artwork like i love cds but in reality like i have no use for cds anymore i bought a bunch of cds i i just have them now like i don't even have a cd player in my house anymore i just kind of yeah. have them and now i feel good about listening to them on streaming i'm like all right now i, can, I own it it's mine and then vinyl you get to look at it you're like look at this shit like the you guys mastodon fans Big time. Oh, dude. Like, uh, what was it? The Once More Around the Sun? That one, that was beautiful artwork. But on the vinyl, they, like, extended it, like, fivefold. Yeah. Where it's like, whoa. Like, I wanted to buy that. So I didn't get to buy it. I think it sold out. I was like, shit. Oh. <laughs> like, yeah, I, like, I, uh, I haven't seen that vinyl. I have the Crack the Sky vinyl, though. and it's That one's epic. Cool. Awesome. So sick. Oh, and yeah. we had, before we met Travis and got hooked up with him, we were originally trying to – get connected with that artist too he's really really incredible and his packaging is really cool too it's not really, really cool well that's like it's, it's a part of the thing i feel like people don't think about too like i kind of got sad when i like i you know I, I bought my spotify or deezer subscription and i bought my cd that's something you miss like if you don't buy a cd you don't get the artwork like it was kind of it's like that's something like you know people think of some artwork sucks but whatever you know you just <laughs> listen to the music but then you get some you're like holy shit yeah, well, the thing like, for me is the liner notes. I always like reading through the liner notes, or if they had lyrics, I'd sit there oh, and yeah. read through the lyrics on the first listen through if I could. You know, that was that was always a fun you know thing to sit down with the new record and pop, put it on. Oh, it's an experience. Like, how many people really have time today to really sit down? Like, I love when I just like lay on bed, I have my headphones on, I pop in an album or something. Like, there we go, just right through. You listen to vinyl on headphones. That's badass, dude. Oof. Yeah, it's it's a good time. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever done that. That used to be what people did. Like they get home from school and put on a record and put on their headphones and get hot. Yeah. You know, like, now now we put on Spotify. Well, God forbid. Like even when the CDs <laughs> first happened, you had to bring like a contraption this big, and you got if you didn't wear cargo pants with the big ass pockets, like you're just an asshole holding it. Dude, this is a great CD. Anyways, <laughs> like you're just walking around all day. <laughs> Oh, I yeah. was that guy. I had my CD in my left, my right pocket and the CD player in the left. I was just like, fuck, I'm just so unmobilized here. Like I got to sit, wait, I got to change my CD and I'm just pulling out all the <laughs> shit in my pockets. I, I was that guy too, CDs. except the CD in my CD player was insane. Oh, there you go. Well, hey, right there, oh, dude. That was my actually technically my first one. I didn't buy that. I got gifted that one. I love it. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says, but yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> I had it. <laughs> and well, we just the- got paid. So and if you go through like old NSYNC and Backstreet Boys songs, I can guarantee you you're gonna find source and melodies inside of that. <laughs> that in we'll me. do a little mashup video. <laughs> that's all the. That's what's in now, dude. I feel like every time I, I go on like a, a metal blog website, it's like Tool mashed up with this, or like Lamb of God and Justin Bieber. It's like okay, cool. Yes. Sometimes they're sick though. <laughs> it was a Taylor Swift and Tool. I was like what <laughs> and it worked i was like all right stink well, what's like funny now. about that is that they smashed her in album sales in the first week and all of her fans yes. had no idea who oh, tool yeah. even was <laughs> what do you oh, think yeah. of the new tool album uh, i haven't stopped listening to it if that's what <laughs> you're asking i've literally listened to like murder noms and eat the elephant a couple times uh listened to um not much else, man. There's like this, that. Oh, I listened to like Blood Sugar Sex Magic the other day. I'm telling you, these are the only records that I've listened to other than Fear Inoculum since Fear Inoculum came out. <laughs> wow. It's dedication. <laughs> it's the yeah. best thing I've ever heard. Nobody's ever made anything like that. It was pretty, it was pretty great. I was kind of getting mad at certain Tool fans when they were like, you know, like obviously it sounded like, dude, it was just such an experience, especially live. Like, I thank God it was, like, one of the last concerts I really got to see live. Like, that was my last concert. Uh, it was amazing. Like, I got sat in – like, I'm a big dude. I'm wide, bro. Like, I just <laughs> sat there. I got big thighs. I'm just, like, in the stadium seats like this. I'm like, this is awesome. Like, I was just, like – all. I think they played basically every track except for, like, two, I think. You, you didn't see Tempest, though. Yeah, I think – 
they yeah, at the end of the tour. Once they went to Australia. Yeah. Uh, so they didn't do it in the States at all. And then only two, there were two U.S. dates after that that didn't get canceled. And then everything got canceled right then. My yeah. roommate had tickets to the Salt Lake show and it got canceled the day he was going to leave. Oh, oh, that sucks. Thank God I didn't buy tickets because I was about to. They, they came back around here and I was like, I'll spend another hundred dollars. I don't give a fuck. Let's go. Hundred dollars? That's a good deal, dude. It yeah. was something like well, that was way over that, dude. Oh, was over it? They're good. I didn't yeah. buy it. I'm thank God I didn't buy it then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, $100 I is been a killer up. deal for a tool show. That's we paid was... five hundred for VIP that we had to get refunded because the Colorado Spring show got canceled. Oh, jeez. Uh, okay. What was oh, the yeah, VIP? I was go meet Adam and Danny and Justin. I was gonna be so happy. Oh, that <laughs> right. was the VIP package? Holy wow. Yeah, man. That's it's awesome. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about tool shows. And like a lot of shows these days, because the ticket sites are so fucked and they're so like everybody's making money behind the scenes. Ticketmaster is making so much money off of those third party. All people. the fake fake resales too, guaranteed. Oh. And they like they they put up their own tickets, don't they? Like yep. that's it's like disgusting. the whole thing is despicable. So you get on, you got to try and get Ticketmaster tickets because if you do, they're the best value. You can get a floor seat for 160 bucks if you are the luckiest person in the world. And every once in a while, I talk to people. Which I wasn't. Like, Dude, I got row five from Ticketmaster. And I'm like, how the hell did you do that? that Play the sense. lottery. Please. <laughs> so if, you want, like, if you want the real good seats for Tool, you have to pay 400 bucks off of those third-party sites. And if you're paying 400 bucks, why not pay 500 bucks? Know that it goes directly to the band. Uh, none of that markup charge is, is getting in anybody else's pockets. You get to watch their sound check. You get like 150 bucks worth of free exclusive merch. They were doing like Jeez. backpacks that were embroidered this time around. They were so sick. You get to meet, potentially meet Adam, Danny, and Justin if they're all feeling good. And then you get guaranteed first five rooms. <laughs> like, oh, there why not pay the 500 bucks at that point? You know, it's like, I so actually much. didn't know that that they had that package. Usually yeah, the VIP cool things VIP. are like other entry and like you get like a shirt or something like that and a laminate, but usually not like a meet and greet and all that. Extra. No, to a VIP is the real deal because yeah. they love their fans so much. Yeah. You also, they have the most merch I've ever seen in my life. Like, like when <laughs> I went smart. there, I've never seen that much merch. Also, at that price, like I was like, holy shit! Like five, like fifteen, eighty dollar t shirts are like. Oh my god, thousand dollar drum head that looked amazing. And I saw like 17 of them on the floor. I was like, oh my god, 17 people spent a thousand dollars. Holy <laughs> shit. After buying like a two hundred dollar ticket. I yeah, was blown away. Crazy. I spent fifty bucks on like a hot dog. I was like, dude, this place <laughs> is robbing me of money. I can't even fathom buying something right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh dude. Yeah, it's that sounds amazing. I didn't know because they always well. Honestly, some of the Mystica tool got robbed from me because I thought they didn't put their music on air. The rumor I heard was they didn't put their stuff on streaming or YouTube or any of that stuff because they were like, yo, we're about the art. We don't do that stuff. And I found it was like a record deal thing. I was like, are you shitting me? So record companies have made it hard for me to listen to tool on an everyday basis because I thought they were just like artist integrity. It was like for some weird reason because I could see Maynard doing that. I heard it was just the record company at the end, right? I don't know that it was. I honestly don't know that it was. I, no, I'm not sure what it was. The Maynard's interview that he does on Rogan when he announced the name of Fear Inoculum and all that, he, Rogan was like, why didn't you have stuff on streaming before? And he, it seemed, Maynard kind of blamed it on Adam and Danny and Justin. Uh, probably Danny seems to be the one. Uh, because I think Danny does have that, like, uh, we want people to listen to the full album. And Maynard's point, of course, was like, we never play the full album in order. You know, like, why, why does it matter? Uh, yeah. We just want people to listen to this shit and we can make more money. Um, yeah. But I'm sure that I know that they dealt with really serious contractual problems. They were in lawsuits where they couldn't even record music. Yeah. Which makes album. me so sad because, again, like one of the greatest bands of all time. It's just like, you're going to lock them down? Like, are yeah. you shitting me of all bands? Was it 14 years? <laughs> How long was it? 13, yeah. yeah. 13, yeah. That's absolutely nuts. So what'd you say is your favorite off the album? Fear Inoculum. <laughs> took, me, right. it took me a long time because it came out early, and that's the, that was, I was surprised they put out a single, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I listened to that song probably like 50 times before the record came out. And then the record came out and I had to like digest everything. And I went invincible, like pretty hard. It was, yeah, invincible number one. 
And then after a while, it came back to Pure Inoculum just because the lyrics, like just the whole thing, like if, if you ask me what a perfect tool song is, I would say Pure Inoculum. It's, there's no, that is like the perfect, that is the essence of the tool. Like the content of the lyrics, the, the chord choices, the rhythmic differentiation, the way that everything sort of fluctuates, but it's all in one thing. It's, yeah, it's just perfect. I, I think the impact too. You like, guys all love the album too. They'll give, yeah. you, they'll give you their favorites. I think my favorite's either Fear and Aquilum or Numa. My man, I was going to say the same thing. It was between those two. Like those two, like when I listen to the album, I will go to those two first and then I yeah. usually just let it play. It's just one of those yeah. like, See, I have a hard time. I'm an album person, so I usually have a hard time not. I agree. If I love an album, it's yeah. dude. If an album stack with tunes, that's why I usually say I, I fucking sure. first to bet. I'm like it's over. Like I'm like, yeah. eh. like that new Cord Orange album. I was like, fuck it. That's Chris. I was annoying as shit. I was like, yo, can you give me a Bluetooth <laughs> speaker. He's like, why? No reason. Code Orange just blasting. I was like, I don't give a fuck if we're playing like some calm music, like calm fucking activity. I'm playing blasting Code Orange. I don't care. Same thing with the Tool album. Yeah. What about you, Justin? You got a fa- what's your favorite off the album? Um, I don't know. It's so hard to say. Um, descending, descending, yeah. descending. Yeah, yeah. Invincible is great too. I like Cold Tempest and and uh, descending. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, that well, that's why I heard a lot of people. I'll, I'll, I'll go cliche drummer, chocolate chip trip. Fuck yeah, <laughs> yeah, my man. <laughs> so I was so man. happy when they played that. When he played that live, I was like. So he's been doing that long before they, he, Danny's been doing that the whole time. It was it was Merkaba before. It, they, so on Salival they have Merkaba, and that's Danny's like drum solo thing. And it just sort of evolved into Chocolate Chip Trip over the years. It, I've been seeing Tool for a long time regularly, so I've kind of seen the evolution of of what that is, and it's continued to evolve past the album. By the way. When we saw him on the Fear Inoculum tour, we were dates two and three of the Fear Inoculum tour. Me and Justin went to both, and Jake was at the first one. And then I caught them in Atlanta in uh, January. And Danny, the thing has evolved so much. Now he starts on the gong and does like a five-minute gong solo. And his gong is like you know, six, six feet inch. tall. It's, it's massive. The 60 inch gun. Yeah, then he, did he that pops picture. over to the kit and plays a whole like five minute drum solo. No synthesizers. No nothing. Just Danny on the kit, which I've never heard in my life. I've seen them so much and he's always programming, doing crazy stuff and then soloing over it. He sat down and did a five minute rock and roll, John Bonham, just badass drum solo. And then he stood up, programmed all the cool stuff for Chocolate Chip Trip. Then sat back down and did a whole other solo, <laughs> and my jaw and everything attached to it was like beyond the floor. It was insane. <laughs> I've never heard Danny play like that in my life. Me and my roommate just looking at each other like, "What? What? Oh my god!" Uh, we Thank need you more. You regret not going to the show. Oh, you should regret. It. You should feel bad. It should be a regret of your life. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I told you, bro. Never miss tool. You could get hit by an asteroid at any time. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah yeah well that's what i mean like when i started going to concerts i think tool was still going around but i was like still young i had to rely on people like, yeah hey, you go to the show you go to the show bro like no i hate that band all right whatever all right cool <laughs> you just gotta find someone else i'm like but so by the time i started going to shows on my own tool was like they were just on permanent hiatus they would do like big festivals and they never came around here now that's why i was like well like also i'm a drummer you know i f- I need more Danny Carey videos in our lives. Like I see there's like five, I've watched like the five he's done. And then like the bootleg shit that people have done for him. You and that was the, the best Numa part of the concert. Though, right. Huh? You seen the Numa playthrough? Oh, I watched it like 17 times, dude. I play it <laughs> while I play video games. I just put it on the side. I'm like, what? Dang. And I die when I'm like, Oh shit. There it is. It's awesome. He's just a master. And I love it. Like the whole band is just love. Like, you know, we're going to, you know, this segment will be just be sucking tool off for 45 minutes. But That's literally what I'm cool with it because <laughs> it's fucking, they deserve it, man. Like tool suck fest. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, worth it because Danny Carey is just one of those guys. Like it makes me sad, uh, happy and sad where he's just not one of those guys that like, I wish he was just at his house right now recording nonstop videos, every playthrough him just fucking gong solo. Like you said, I'll do it. I don't care. I'll watch it. He needs like know. a, he needs a red band, you know, like Brian Redband on the yeah, uh, right? originally. 
He needs like an assistant that he can just go and send to do things. Oh, dude. Don't be doing this. That, yeah, it's it's unstoppable because it's just like even like, you know, forget the technical stuff, just the feel. Like he just makes it feel so good. He's just this big caveman, seven foot tall with big hair with thousand pound fucking bass drums made of fucking paisti cymbals and he's just <laughs> wrecking it. I'm like, dude, this guy. <laughs> Do you see the kit that uh, Alex Gray made for him? No, what was that one? It just, he made it this year. It was a hand painted, just. It's a sonar kit, but it, Alex Gray hand painted the, the snare drums. and the kick. I don't think the maybe well because he does roto toms, so he doesn't do toms, right? He just does the snare he and the kick. He has normal. He has oh, the floor toms. Yeah. He kind of goes back and forth. He's been using one rack tom, which kills me because his beautiful kit. I'm like, dude, and he just has roto toms. I'm like, what the fuck, Danny? You got these beautiful <laughs> toms. Put them back up. Like, what are you doing? But yeah, look it up, Alex Gray. He hand painted the. I'm pretty sure he hand painted both kick drums and maybe the snare, but oh, then man. the toms were wrapped in, and it's all Alex Gray art, and it is. That's unreal, man. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about a band doing it right. I'm good. I'll be the cliche tool fan, just like dude, they do no wrong. They well, that's no what. Wrong. Well, that's what's interesting. It's like none of you guys picked it, but like what Chris said, I felt like when the album came out, everybody in like that I knew listened to Tool said Tempest. Like that yeah, was the song. It's a more aggressive one, so people are like, and it's got that kind of like original Adam Jones bluesy vibes, where he's doing the wah, 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 wah. yeah. <laughs> you got that <laughs> heavy double kick groove at the end, where I'm like, damn, bro, <laughs> that machine oh, yeah. is next level, dude. Oh yeah. And I was like, yeah, because I agree. Like Numa, Fear Inoculum, like all those softer songs. Like everyone was like, oh, they're like really soft. I'm like, yeah. Don't you want to put headphones on and just lay on your bed or some shit? Like, I, I, I think it was the heaviest thing ever. Really? really? The drums kick in. The drums are just so heavy. Just That's like, true. They just slam. I was just like, when I first heard that, I was like, what <laughs> the fuck? Like, that, that was the first song initially that I liked the most. Just well, I guess, yeah, well, I guess like more, it's just like, I feel like it's just like as a journey. Like, they're all, yeah. like, they're all a 10 minute song. So you like, you feel it. So, like, to me, like, I'm just, I'm just chilling. I'm <laughs> like, and it's just amazing. Like, also has like seven intros that song, which is weird. Yeah. It kicks yeah, in. Yeah. You're like, it's done, right? New intro. Yeah. All right, weird, cool. I'll take it. And then another intro. Like then the song begins. I'm like, holy shit! All right, like I'll take it all. It all sounds great. But god yeah, but damn. The weird thing is, if you, my roommate loves to go back and watch old two tool videos, and Adam will be noodling in like 2009 in between songs, and it's. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they had it this whole time like, dude you're playing numa in 2009 <laughs> fuck you man well that was like uh the idea like when everyone got kind of annoyed when i think it was danny carey's like yeah we'll write maybe we'll write a new album during this whole quarantine we'll have it out in a year it's like are you shitting me it's like took 10 years like 13 years for this last album to come they out. said it was done for a while though they just said that um they couldn't put it out due to legal reasons yeah Partially, it was also what Maynard will tell you is that it was self sabotage a lot of it because um, Adam and Danny and Justin are very picky about where a song goes. And Maynard's kind of like, let's pump them out kind of a thing. Well, if he you has look three at his bands. bands. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I mean, you look at Pussifer, they, you know, they put out a bunch of records. They're, they're very prolific because Maynard is a, you know, he cracks the whip. He's like, if this is going to happen, we're going to do it and we're going to get it done. We're not going to sit around and test this and test that. Like there's a certain amount of experimentation that needs to get done. But then once you've got an idea of where the song is, what the feel is, the choices that, <clears throat> the choices that get thrown up, it's, it's so like every one of them is valid. So just pick one, you know? And that's what he said, Maynard said in an interview on Revolver, he said the new Tool album was great eight years ago. And I, I just got so <laughs> mad. I was like, you guys, just make a choice and put it out, man. God. Yeah. Right. yeah. But some bands, it seems like they really do need the whip. Like, it seems like some of those artsy bands, like, they overthink things. Yeah. I know I've done, like, the few things I've done on my left. I'm like, is it really ready? Is it really? I'm really <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's like it just happens. Like, sometimes... <laughs> no, well, I don't know. It just sometimes, yeah, just so many cool ideas. It's an infinite amount you, of ideas Justin, for every Danny. idea. <laughs> yeah he's working on his website right now and he wants to make some updates make it a little bit fancier right so he's he's adding icons you know everybody you want icons that look nice makes oh, you yeah. look like a pro so you know there's you got the microphone you know the little microphone recording 
merch icon. Yeah. So like, this is the recording service. For an hour, he's sitting there scrolling <laughs> through different microphone icon options. I'm like, dude, oh this is a metaphor for so much shit right now. Just take one. <laughs> oh yeah, I know that problem. Like literally, I started doing like reaction videos like a month ago, and every video was different. Like leading up to it, like every time, I'm like, this got better. Oh, this is a better idea. Okay, this is a better idea. This is a better. I'm like, just fucking, just do the stupid <laughs> video. It's supposed to be the easiest content in the world to put out. Just record the video. <laughs> like, fuck. Yeah, it, I get it. It's, but that, like, I guess I'm just like, yeah, luckily you guys, you know, self sufficient that way. But I guess Tool really need, like, just some fancy suit guy to come in. Like, hey, put the fucking album out already, please, for the love of God. Get to the next one. Who's <laughs> all the big, the big bands always no get that one guy, right? No uh, fancy suit guy is ever going to tell Tool what to no. do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's that Which one guy that I feel like good. every band used to get. Um, Oh my god, he did like Slipknot's album, Red Hot Chili Peppers, the oh, Chris Lord album. No. With the big, with the big uh, beard. Oh, uh, Ronnie Rick uh, Rubin. Yeah, Rick Rubin. There we go. I feel like who's every Ron- big band used to get him. Ronnie, who's the producer named Ronnie? That was the other guy. He worked with like corn and stuff. Ronnie. Uh, Ross of- Robinson? Ross Robinson. No, yeah. it's Ronnie somebody. Anyways. James Dio. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. See, Remember for me, that? it's Ronnie Size, but nobody knows who Ronnie Size is. If you do, you know good music. <laughs> <laughs> so let's bring into another segment, which I'm pretty sure you guys remember, um, the random silly question segment. You guys remember this yeah. one? Yeah. All right. Got some new ones for you. So uh, I'll start it off with this one, best tour prank that you either witnessed or been a part of. Spider Man. Spider Man, dude. <laughs> Spider Man is the only one. Um, <laughs> I don't know how this started, but uh, we, uh, I, right, I was, I like to hide and, and then jump out and scare people because I had obviously just thinking weird. <laughs> and, <laughs> so I used to, I used to like hide behind the exit door while people are loading gear out. And I wait for Riley to come and I pop out and I go, Spider Man! And he'd be like, ah! And I'd always have my camera filming. And I never, I still have all the videos. I got to go through and make a Spider Man compilation. Yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I caught him like so many times with Spider Man. And he's like, oh man, you got me. And then one night, we're pretty hammered in Kentucky because we had a day off. And on our days off, we like to go eat like a nice meal or whatever. So we're hammered. We went and got some ice cream and then ran away from the ice cream shop and then came back. <laughs> and uh, and we, we came back to the bar and had some more drinks. And I went to the bathroom and they left. And I got out of the bathroom and I'm like, oh, they must be outside. So I walk outside and I don't see them anywhere. And then Riley comes out of nowhere and is like, Spider Man. And I <laughs> scream so loud. And he's got it on video. Oh my God, he got me so good. <laughs> Unreal. That's awesome. That must be a great thing to witness as person. Just what the Although, hell is happening? Actually, I have a better tour prank if you, if you want to know. This is the worst sure. thing I've ever seen be done to anybody. And it involves our good friend Chris Taylor Brown of Trapped. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, All right. Our first tour was with Trapped and before these guys were in the band. And Dan, our former bassist, was known for uh, not having the greatest uh, protective methods when it came to intimacy with people oh, there and you go. Uh, um they so, tr- ty the guitarist of trap decided to mess with him and tell him that this person he had hooked up with who uh ty was somewhat dating and was kind of upset about uh had herpes oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he wakes dan up at 2 30 in the morning and dan had like a really bad flu he was really sick and I felt really, I was like, dude, you guys, you can't do this to him. He's sick. Like, this is not cool. And Chris Taylor Brown was like, we're doing this. Like, we are getting this guy. Like, it's happening. I'm like, okay. So they wake Dan up. Okay. And they're like, hey, man, we got something really important to tell you. And Dan goes, ghost white. Like, so scared. I felt so bad. <laughs> and, and everybody else is, like, going along with it. And I'm sitting here like, oh, my God, this is, this is whack. Are we really doing this to this poor sick man who's got a fever of 104? And he's Jeez. miserable. And so Ty proceeds to t- – no, Chris Taylor Brown. Chris Taylor Brown proceeds to tell Dan, hey, man, so this girl that you hooked up with, she's got this really virul- virulent – or something. he used some really, like, intense word, like, very strong form of herpes that's really hard to treat. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so like the you original know, herpes you really should go get tested tested because you probably have herpes and dan's like he's like oh, oh okay oh wow okay um oh fuck and i'm like okay can we tell him it's a joke now and they're like oh man why'd you ruin it i'm like this guy is fucking shitting his pants right now He's like, it's not real. I don't have herpes. We're like, no. And he's like, oh my god, I'm gonna wear a condom from now on. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have told that story. But, yeah. It would a bummer if he just had her for some reason after that. He's like, dude, I got herpes. I thought you guys were kidding. It's like we don't know what you did. He's like, fuck off. <laughs> That's fucked up, man. That was whack. It was really fucked up, dude. And that was that was the worst to it. Especially if he like started getting up with the flu, just trying to like, I gotta, I gotta go, like you know. Imagine it went away the flu, it. like he got so scared, like his adrenaline <laughs> pumped it out of his body. <laughs> dude, <laughs> he sweated all out. <laughs> dude, she said it was a pimple on her ass. Girls don't have pimples on their ass. Wear a condom. What? <laughs> <laughs> dude, that day, dude, that, that that's fucked up, man. <laughs> really fucked up. And that was, I think, one hundred percent Chris Taylor Brown's idea too. There you go. Who else was Another. on that tour? What'd you say? Who else was on that tour? Um, Super Bob, the homies, dude. Okay. You guys know Super Bob? They're not a band anymore, but they're really good. And they're like the coolest dudes ever. And probably the hardest working people, actually, hands down, the hardest working people I have ever met in the music industry that didn't make it. And they really should have. But, you know. Okay. That's a shame, dude. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, question number two. Um, what is your biggest pet peeve? Where's my jewel charger? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you, Riley. Oh, <laughs> every dude, every <laughs> single day. I want to say day. when you guys were at the studio, he said that, but I'm not too sure. <laughs> like 20 times like god damn it riley get over it the problem was like the week before that on that tour he quit jeweling for like three days that was you don't ever want to be around somebody who's breaking a nicotine addiction right? especially oh, not wow. on tour. <laughs> yeah of course so, uh, so the new album comes out next week where's my jewel charger by the way guys can we just stop this interview real quick to find it <laughs> that'd be really helpful <laughs> what about you jake what do you have uh biggest pet peeve Mm. like oh unresponsive phone calls for sure like when someone just keeps like saying hello and it's like they're not there man just hang up that's my <laughs> oh, it kills yeah. me bro <laughs> it felt like that when i called optimum the other day i'm like hey i have no internet and like it was like and i'm like hello 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 <laughs> i go over and over well that's the best when businesses do that where you know they're real people but they just for some reason just stop answering they're like wait a minute what it's like so my product is broken hello anyone Wait, what happened? No, yeah. uh, come back. <laughs> <laughs> I waited an hour and a half on that phone. Just, I was like, I want my fucking internet. And then it ended up not working and I had to hang up. I was so pissed. <laughs> Is this a million dollar company? No one has that phone? Anyone's answering? Hello? It's all the worst. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> all right, Ben, what do you got? Oh, let's see here. Pet peeve. Uh, is indecisiveness. If somebody gets really indecisive, I just want to fucking slap them and make a decision. Shit, make bro. a fucking choice. Uh, <laughs> you would hate me, bro. What do you want to eat? I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, that's easy for me. I don't eat anything. Just <laughs> the same thing. Kind yeah. of like, like, it's the, like, cause here's the thing is like, if, if you ask somebody what they want to eat and they're like, I don't know, I don't care. That's fine. I'll make the choice. I'm great at making choices. It's just when somebody <laughs> else has to make the choice and I have to wait for them to make the choice, that's when I lose it. <laughs> oh, or the uh, where do you want to eat? I don't know. Do you want to eat there? Nah, not really. All right, where do you want to eat? I don't know. What about here? Nah. Fuck off. <laughs> There's nowhere you can eat. It's Our all... entire friend group. Yeah, <laughs> that's been a whole hangout. Where do you want to oh, eat? Everything's yeah. closed. Let's go home. Yeah, by the time we decided something, everything was closed by then. You're like, oh, you... we're just going home. <laughs> yeah, that's awful. Jeez. Um. All right. Question number three. Jesse, you want to take this one away? Oh, yeah. What do your bandmates rip on you for? Since you're all here. There we go. Yeah, what do you guys... Uh, <laughs> now we find out. <laughs> <laughs> all stare at each other. Playful banter right now. Uh, my bandmates rip on me for talking too much and <laughs> talking about my old bandmates too much, too. <laughs> 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 I have trauma. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm still processing my trauma <laughs> from living with George and Dan for three years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What about you, Justin? Um, I can tell you if you can't think of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That's the bad fat of the band. Yeah, no, it's in, indecisive, but no, it's putting shit in the way. Oh, he yeah. always he takes his shit and he puts it right where you're trying to go, and it's not intentional. He just isn't. He's like in his world doing his thing, and this is where that's got to go, and then it's right in my way. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I don't think yeah. we've I don't think we've known Jake enough to yeah, be able to yeah, rip on him for anything yet. All right, new segment. Come up with things to rip on Jake for. There you go. You too. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I we would like we would rip like, we ripped on Riley. We called Riley the boy all the time because he was really young, right? And he yeah. looks really young. Jake's four years younger than Riley. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, but see, Jake's like ten times more mature than Riley. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, seriously, we don't have anything to rip on him for because he's mature and he's got his shit together. And he's a seriously good player. And Aww. I guess we'll rip on him for being too quiet. How about that? You're too quiet. Yeah. Use, Stop use being respectful. <laughs> Stop being respectful and nice. Be yeah, mean. Stop being a good person. <laughs> now tell us everything about uh, Ben. Tell us your fucked up side. Right? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's actually a good thing, dude. We actually thought yeah. that that question was going to be the opposite. It's like, man, Jake's going to get ripped on. He's the new guy. He's like, wow, <laughs> the opposite. He literally got the only compliment out of everyone. All Not right, having so a go. five string. That's what we rip yeah, on. Yeah. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All those extra notes. No. <laughs> yeah, okay. All there right. we go. All right, so if you're so quiet, Jake, tell us a little, uh, like, your, your favorite TV show. Oh, <laughs> get go. to know Jake. <laughs> my favorite tv show man i don't know i don't really watch tv i like this hot ones count oh like yeah that's like, a, that's like a series I, i've been watching that a lot that's for sure. no we love you have us yeah. on your show yeah <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of weird how interesting people get when you just feed them super hot stuff and then watch them fall out of character <laughs> yeah. like i remember kevin hart he's like super positive and stuff but even him he's just like when he wiped the first sweat off his breath <laughs> like my god Oh, the hot sauce fuck. show, right? <laughs> he just I haven't watched the Kevin Hart one, but I don't think he makes it, right? He, I don't remember. I think he makes it to like one of the last ones, but he like he falls apart pretty hard. Like, is that the <laughs> the one where like Paul Rudd is on? Dude, they Paul Rudd's it. my hero. That one's everyone's so on it. It's kind of weird. It's yeah, I, I only know that because of the uh, nonstop like memes or GIF with Paul Rudd. Like, look at us, look at us. Oh yeah, just guys, <laughs> just beef. Well, Joey line. Diaz actually brought the blue cheese. Oh yeah, he didn't like, eat oh, any of it though. Yeah, well, it's for the, yeah, the blue cheese with wings that go fuck your mother. <laughs> you don't need Listen to your dog. Um, this is America, dog. You come here, you, you, you eat your nuts, you sniff it, and you go on with the day. Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Dude, Jesse, when I feel like, I don't know when he started watching him, but he was quoting him non stop all the, the time. <laughs> every conversation we had, every hangout, it was just Joe Diaz the whole time. Well, it's Dude, like his, his tweets and Facebook posts are the best, man. Uh, well, it's if Monday, you're... your balls are smelly, but you got to shower. So go rinse them off and then sling <laughs> dick. <laughs> so, write a script, get in there, kiss your daughter goodbye, because it's your day, motherfucker. Get after it. Kiss <laughs> <laughs> your daughter goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's oh, a, dude, it's He's nice. the nicest guy, too. Have you guys ever met Joey? I, I saw him live. I didn't get to meet him, but no. yeah, he's, he's nuts. Well, he's just a great guy. It's just crazy. We stuff him full of, we stuff him full of weed bread when he comes. Oh, that, pfft, here, Joey. You. This bread will have you seeing the devil. And then he'll <laughs> he'll shout out my roommate like Metal Brad. You got the best bread. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Dude, it is. Yeah, he's a gnarly motherfucker. I well, you ever okay? If you're a fan of him, like if you guys are fans of, uh, did you ever see the one where he's uh, where Lee put the uh, was it the national anthem on? He's like, put it on, dog. He's like, North Korea's <laughs> coming, but what, Kim Jong what whatever right his name is. Anthem. This isn't the right one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're American dog I don't give a fuck People fall upon the streets Kim Jong Whatever Is gonna drop a nuke We'll go in there and Drop nukes on his ass Cause America dog <laughs> Fucking unreal uh, Alright so He has eat mushrooms On stage once Oh jeez Yeah That yeah, sounds unreal really close too And I saw the mushrooms I was like yep He's gonna trip <laughs> was, he, was he on stage Long enough to like Start feeling it Or did he get off Right uh, before it was right at the end Of his set But then he uh, so this oh. was the Joe Loop, and everybody would hang out outside on the street after the show. So everybody would know you hang out afterwards, you stand in line, you get a picture with Joe. Ari, Ari was there, 
and Joey was there. So we're hanging out with Ari and like feeding him banana bread. And he's just like stealing it. We're like, oh man, some of this is for Joey. He's like, fuck Joey, this is mine. And then <laughs> Joey's fucking tripping and walking around shouting about how it costs $16 billion to get to Mars. And NASA wants to spend $16 billion. He's like, $16 billion to get to Mars. What the fuck? $16 billion. <laughs> I didn't even know. He's like, why are we fucking $16 billion? Why? <laughs> Just going up, walking around in circles, just oh, getting Joey Diaz heated on mushrooms, just fucking shouting at people in Denver two in the morning. <laughs> That's amazing. Holy shit. Well, because uh, Joe lived in Denver, right? Or Colorado? Uh, he did, yeah. He lived probably kind of near where we live now. Outside of Boulder, I thought. He like, lived in the mountains. Joey, Joey, went to, Joey went to prison in Aspen, I think, or Boulder. It was like really nice, apparently. Joe Rogan used to live up here joey yeah joey used to go tie people to trees and cover them in honey in colorado and let the bears take care of it <laughs> well, that was my favorite it's like i was a chael sonnen i think it was like when his per- podcast for first started he had joey diaz on and joey diaz just opened up to him about how he kidnapped some guy once he's like let me tell you dog about the time i kidnapped someone he's like joey i was just saying hi to you <laughs> like why he just opens up with it it's just like, he's like i had a gun i put him in the trunk he just wanted to give me my money cocksucker <laughs> i was like what can i say <laughs> All right, before we we let you guys go, um, anything you want to mention, like about the album, about upcoming events, anything fans could look forward to? Um, (laughs) Yeah, so like I had mentioned earlier, our crowdfunding pre-sale goes online Friday, June 19th. And we're going to have limited edition stuff available, stuff from dollar all the way to, you know, thousands if you want to give us that much money. We will make it worth your while <laughs> if, <laughs> we will feed you banana bread <laughs> yes <laughs> yes banana bread. Um, <laughs> if you purchase anything in the crowdfunding pre-sale whether it's just a sticker for a dollar or whatever it is you'll get the mp3 download of our new track the insipidness and you will get access to the wellspring page which is our fan club where you'll get to see all of our exclusive only fans content uh, <laughs> and uh <laughs> And so we're, it's, it's your front row seat to the recording process. I don't think many people really understand what all goes into recording and how difficult it is and really how much of a science and a, and a magic uh, spell it really is. Mm-hmm. So we want people to see how much we put into this and also just to get that special feeling of being part of the creation of something. Um, so yeah, check it out. It goes on, goes on uh, everything goes on sale Friday. And join our email list. That's the best way to stay updated about everything because Mark Zuckerberg and friends don't like us. So uh, <laughs> listen to source.com and there'll be a little pop-up window that will cue, to, cue you to subscribe for our email list. And then that's how you'll find out about all the cool stuff. When we get to start touring again, that'll be the easiest way to find out about touring. So if you want to find out about our tour dates and when we're releasing stuff, join our email list. And I think that's it, man. You guys can have one of those uh, socially distant concerts that's been uh, there that are happening now. I think Ace Freely actually announced one too. I'm super into it, doing driving concerts, man. That'd be so sick. I'm all about it. Yeah. You know, there's people that would get out of their car and start moshing though. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Or, or, or quickly. moshing with their cars. And then it'd be oh. uh, roller, or, uh, yeah, yeah, demolition, derby. demolition <laughs> derby, not roller. <laughs> no, I, I saw a meme Monster like Charles. that. It was like driving concerts when Slayer plays driving concerts and all the cars, like a 17 car pile up. It's like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing is, bringing it full circle, there was a Metalocalypse episode exactly about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Murder Face's birthday, I think yeah. it was. It was, it was somebody's birthday and they wanted to have this uh, Nascar extravaganza. And uh, you guys don't remember that? Yeah, I, I, I kind of wait. No, when Murderface played in the Demolition Derby, like he got his own car. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. I've and he had like the time. the car was like made with the headlights of this murderer, made with the seat of this murderer, made with the <laughs> car. It's like it's like every piece was a murderer's like possession. He's <laughs> like Edgeen gear shifter. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, you guys have never been this nice to me before. <laughs> just like crying blood. His tattoo. Just, <laughs> Nobody's perfect. This mess is a place. I'm going to do that someday. <laughs> God damn it, Murderface, what's wrong with your dick? You try playing bass with your dick, it'll look all fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs>
That's a spot on impression right there, man. <laughs> I tried, man. It's not a spot. I haven't watched him a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I just know he fucking barely understood what he said most of the time. <laughs> oh, man. Well, thank you guys for joining the show, dude. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank sure. you so awesome. much. Thanks All right, guys. Yeah. Peace. Yeah, guys. Everyone be safe. Thank you so much. Nice <laughs> seeing you guys. You. Yeah. Peace. See you. All right, guys, welcome back. That was Source. We had Ben, Jake, and Justin on the show, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, I think, is that the most we've had so far? Uh, I think that's the most people we had on the podcast, right? Usually, yeah, we've had the most we had two. Yeah, so that's the most people. We had three. Yeah, so that was pretty awesome. One Um, more. Calling all the way from Colorado, so that was cool. Last time they came, uh, I think they said August they came over. yeah, they came actually to the studio at WMSC, so it was fun. And now having them uh, unfiltered on the podcast was a lot of fun too. Well, yeah, it was pretty fun. I, I like I wasn't there for that first interview, so it was my first time meeting those guys, and they were super cool. I listened to a bunch of the music before the interview, uh, like maybe a few days ago. I ran through a bunch of stuff. I tried to save stuff because you know I like to do my reactions, so I'm saving some of the newer songs. So. Uh, yeah, I thought they were great guys, all of them, and uh, super fun, and uh, we all seemed to like the same stuff. So, Yeah, I was going to say, everything we mentioned, we all liked. I mean, you, you know, have a so lot of interest, though, to that, so that helps. No, I don't. I have, like, two. I like my family. I like God. And I like oh, my, my God. <laughs> uh, all things you just lied about. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, what? Oh, I, like, <laughs> I have a cross right here. Poor cross. That, unreal. Oh, man, that was great. But, so um yeah, I, I hope we, they can have shows too. Like they said, like you know, usually the smaller bands are hurting from not touring the most, but um, at least they made a lot of money on that live stream that didn't go that well. That's cool. Because uh, if you did watch it, did you watch the live stream at all? They they had a lot of technical difficulties. Oh really? And like you said, it was Ben screaming at the computer for thirty minutes or whatever. So uh, I went back and watched it, and I was like, oh okay. But uh, I'm glad they made money off that. It didn't go off like they thought it would, and they still made more money than they would at a show. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's it's weird. Like I like we we've been saying on this podcast, I was it's always a talking point I like to bring up. I don't know. I always think there's sure, there should be a way that bands in, in, like, integrate live streaming to their stuff. Either like when they're recording an album, they do it weekly, like a show, or something to like kind of keep their like name in the presses and like in the social media aspect. Because when you go record an album, you usually go dark. You might record, you might release the album series, like the little in studio thing when it's all done. But usually people go dark for a few months, especially a band like Lamb of God, where they literally go dark for like yeah. a year. They're disappeared. That's ridiculous. But like they can do that. They're a bigger band. But like smaller bands, like every time I die, you see them like all alone. They're they're tweeting and stuff. But, you know, they play shows here and there. But that's it. Like, wouldn't it be amazing to see a weekly show from it or maybe a biweekly or a monthly show at least? But every time I die, they play an hour set, a half hour set. And uh, I think that's a way to go because, again, I'll pay five bucks. You have a hundred pants pay five bucks. Would you would you believe the argument that that might take away from the live show? So no. if people could see it every month or something like that, they're like, no, nah, I don't think I'm gonna go to the show. It's like forty five dollars. I don't care about the other band on the tour. I don't want to okay. drive two hours for the show. Like I'll just catch them on the next live stream. No, because you want to. Well, some people maybe if they're that lazy. But if you really hate the live experience, then yeah, sure. But I love the well, live. Because how many times do you hear people like at least in our friend group like, I don't care about that opening band, dude. Like, oh my yeah, god, I, I have to sit through they, all these bands. Like, you know what I mean? Well, the problem is they also are not people that go to concerts. Yeah. They go to one concert. Like we go to many concerts. It's a difference. There's a different mindset. It's like people. Well, who would go you say we're a- the normal? No. I think we're just we're kind of like there's not the majority. We're the minority. We're not the aspect. majority, but. It's kind of like that rule. I kind of heard someone talk about this. It's like the thousand true fan rule that you can make it in anything you want if you have a thousand true fans. Hardcore. You have a thousand people that will are willing to pay ten, a hundred dollars a year, just that a hundred dollars per person a year, which means a ticket, a show, a, a t shirt, maybe an album. You can make more, like, you know, that's a hundred thousand dollars. I think there's a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> per show. Yeah, Math, I forgot. But Jesse, yeah, sorry, Math. But uh, you Math know, guy Jess. Now, basically, the majority, yeah, sure, won't do that. But the minority, yeah, we will. I will go to the show because it costs free. If the shows are free on Twitch, then everyone will watch and still want to go because it's still fun. I love the Code Orange show. I thought it was so fun. They've done that a couple times now, right? No, they've only done the show once, but they've done live streams where, like, Reba played a guitar, like, played guitar, like, some uh, tracks from the new album. 
uh shay did like a like an electronic set from like he does all the sound effects so he did that like a set you know they did some question and answer yeah. stuff but like uh like yeah i still love it but i bought a t-shirt i bought a vinyl i donated like i donated some subs i think i donated like five subs but <laughs> I, I you know i it was still free for me though i chose to spend that money but if the shows were back on the next week i would go to the show indefinitely i'd pay the 25 i'd play the 45 like because it just like helps out the band like that's the thing i was trying to get through like you know we all agreed on it's like the idea like i appreciate if you don't have money and you can't buy music and you got to stream it or, you, or back in the day you got to download it from limewire pirate bay what the hell ever yeah uh but in the end if you really think that's like if you think that's not selfish then what the hell's your problem like it doesn't help the band like i know some people try to make it like i said in the interview uh it, it, they say oh it helps smaller bands get noticed it's like yeah but where's the money coming from it still takes money to live yeah so it's like that house that they were in with all their fancy equipment. You think the government just gave the house to them? <laughs> no, they, if they don't make money, that stuff gets thrown out the window because they get kicked out of their house. It's and such a simple concept. You know, it's like, if you like something, just pay for it. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. If you like, want to keep getting it, if you want to keep getting new music from your bands, just pay for it. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. weird. Like it, it's true. Like go to the movie theater. If you like a movie, go buy a t-shirt, go pay. F- Cause everyone pays for everything else. You, your tire pops you don't just download the fucking tire that's why they can't afford it because they're buying <laughs> well, those yeah. tires <laughs> that's what i mean it's true you gotta figure it out don't be a dick to yourself like out. me like don't be me don't overspend but you know buy a cd cds are cheap as shit yeah like, especially with like uh something like uh Bandcamp where you can name your own price not all the time but some things you can name your own price like I don't know. Like, I think I bought some slugs CDs on Bandcamp the other day, and uh, I was just like, "Oh, I'm gonna put this amount, put that amount," you know. And I, I always like, put like two dollars more if it's like a CD. Well, if it was like a dollar price for summer CD, I put like ten bucks. Like, yeah, this? dude, their whole CD was name your own price. I was like, I'm like, okay, uh, I'm gonna is, give uh, you more now. Yeah, that good for them, but yeah, I would definitely every CD. I think it should be just ten bucks, even if like. Even an EP, I feel weird. Like, I'll pay seven. Maybe, nah, man, but... five. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, right? Some people, yeah, some people will do that. I'm not getting a whole CD. I'm getting three songs. Well, yeah, someone was saying that uh, if, you're, if you're putting out an album, it should not be more than a dollar per track. So I was like, okay. Fair enough. I mean, but... it depends. Yeah. Well, I, I can understand that. But, yeah, I just, uh, I'm just weird. I want, if I was a big dude, if I... If I had a million dollars, I'd song. donate to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like literally. I would pop in like, yo, you don't, you know, the pop. donate, like, oh, give me money. We're out of money. We need to buy weed jar that every band has. I would just put a thousand dollars in that. Doosh. Like, there you go, pal. Peace. Yeah. Like, if I was a millionaire, it'd be over. I'd be not a millionaire so fast. So everyone wants to be friends with Jesse. <laughs> Probably. If I like your stuff and I have money, it's a you're ready getting that Twitch money in, man. All right. Shh. <laughs> don't, bring that up. don't bring that up i didn't get any money from switch what are you talking about <laughs> all right so uh, we're gonna wrap up the podcast right now jesse if people want to follow you on twitch if they want to find your reaction videos what do they do uh yeah my main stuff uh youtube youtube.com slash c slash insid one is my uh or just search insid on youtube instagram twitter insid stream uh twitch insid you know that's all all the good stuff that's where i put up twitch i'll follow all of it because i put po- I post my thumbnails on Instagram. That's I know people seem to like my thumbnails. I try to make them funny and fun. They're pretty good. Post on Instagram. Sifting ones are good. It makes me. It makes it more interesting to me. You know, it's fun. Like because I listen to music. That's why I do the reaction because it's just something I do. I decide to record it because people enjoy it. So I decided to make it a little bit more fun by adding the thumbnails. And also, it's a little different. And Twitter, you find out when I go live on Twitch. When my videos go live, and then Twitch, obviously, I go live. We play games. You know, all that good stuff. That's where you find it. All and also, I have uh, the Metal Teddy Bear Experience featured on my channel, and I usually post uh, I post all the po- podcasts weekly on my description. So you end up watching one of my videos. Look below. There's always the the last episode is always on the description. Oh, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. All right, guys, and uh, I still do my radio show with WMSC, 90.3 WMSC. You can find that on uh, WCRadio.com or iHeartRadio. I think I said that a little too fast. WMSCRadio.com. Up in Montclair. Uh, Upper Montclair, my radio voice. <laughs> and um, if you want to find a show that like previously aired, just go to my Mixcloud account, mixcloud.com/slash/mtbexperience, and you can find it there. 
hot content with my boy Aram. Shout out. Yeah. It's the hottest. Hottest. But uh, guys, until next time, keep it real.